right, where are we, we at? Um, test, uh, test, hey. Test, do, do, do. hey. Okay. One who carries out wood on Shabbos is liable for a measure equivalent to the amount of wood necessary to cook an easily cooked egg. The measure that determines liability for carrying out spices is equivalent to that which is used to season an easily cooked egg. And all these types of spice, all types of spices joined together with one another to constitute the measure. Um, for the measure for carrying out nutshells, pomegranate peels, safflower, and madder, which are used to produce dyes, is equivalent to the amount used to dye a small garment placed atop a woman's hairnet. Um, the measure that determines liability for carrying out urine, natron, and boreth, borit, um, kimolean, kimolean earth, and potash, all of which are abrasive materials used for laundry, is equivalent to the amount that's used to launder a small garment that's placed atop the woman's hairnet. And Rabbi Huda says the measure is equivalent to that which is used to remove a stain. Um, the measure that deters, so that's vav. Um, the measure for carrying out a pepper is any amount. Similarly, the measure that determines liability for carrying out tar is any amount. Measure that determines liability for carrying out various kinds of perfumes and metals is any amount. The measure for carrying out stones of the altar or earth of the altar, sacred um, uh, mekek. Mm -hmm. So my, my translation here says, sacred scrolls are the coverings that become tattered due to an insect yeah. called a mekek that destroys scrolls oh. and mekek that destroys their coverings is any amount. But that might, I don't know if, where that translation necessarily comes from. Yeah. Um, so it's like Geniza uh, stuff. It's basically the worn out, the worn out pieces. It's you know, worn out scrolls and worn out uh, wrappings. Yeah. This is because people store them in order to bury them. Um, Rabbi Yehuda says, even one who carries out accessories of idolatry on Shabbos is liable for carrying it in any amount, as it's stated, and there shall cleave nothing to of the proscribed items to your hand. Since even the smallest amount is prohibited, it must be burned. The amount is significant. Good. And, and is there, are you with us? Yes. And one okay. who out of peddler's basket. Though it contains many sorts, is liable for but one sin offering. Garden seeds, less than the equivalent of a dried fig. Behuda ben Sara says five. Cucumber seeds, two gourd seeds, two Egyptian bean seeds, two a live locust, um, kosher locust, any size, a dead one, the size of a dried fig. A bird of the vineyards, whether alive or dead, any size, for they store it in for medicinal purposes. Reb Yehuda says also one who takes out a live non-kosher locust is liable for any size since they store it for a child to play with. Okay, um, now um, you want to just get your camera back on. Um, the the uh, I, I sent you yesterday. Um, I think this is I think this is a footnote from the from the Art Scroll Gemara actually. Um, that uh, uh, he, he asks exactly exactly my kasha that we just learned in the beginning that if that if you do multiple malachas of the same type you only have one anyway so what were you thinking why why do we what's the fetish of this mishnah and um um rabbeinu tam comes and answers this uh, comes and answers this this is what i what i sent you in the in the group um that the fetish is that even if uh let's say um he learned if let's let's say a person Carried out, uh, carried out two different things without the box. Carried out two different things, but he um, and then he then he, he was told, you know, you carried out um, a uh, this this kind of object, and he says, oh no, I, I can't believe I did that on Shabbos. He goes and he brings his korban chatas, mm -hmm. and then somebody else says, you know, that you, not only did you take out the not only did you take out the uh, the salt. But you also took out the pepper, <laughs> and he says, "Oh no, I didn't realize that." Because he only now he's only brought a korban to atone for the fact that he brought that he took out salt, 
and that was his that is that was his kavana. Now he has to take out, uh, bring another korban katas to uh, to atone for the for the pepper. That's mm -hmm. what. Whereas, if it's all in the one box, it doesn't matter. It's all it's all in one it's it's all one thing that he that he took out. He took out a box containing other stuff, but he took out a box. So once he's brought out a korban katas, even if he didn't know what the contents were of the box, and, he, and so he tells him later, uh, he, he, then he's done his duty. Of course, if he had if he had taken out the the salt and pepper together, and and somebody told him you took out salt and pepper, then he brings only one korban. He doesn't bring one for the salt, one for the pepper, because that's that's our Mishnah that says if you do many malachas of one type, then you only bring one korban for it. But so this is so this is narrowed down according to Rabbi time to a situation where he had actually brought a korban on one already, and then uh, and then now he, get, he 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 discovers that he had actually taken out another min. If he didn't discover it by someone telling him, if he if he put the salt and pepper in, and he knew salt and pepper were in there, and he had two, he had two objects in there, even though it was one act, would be would be higher for those two because he knew he put them in. He said, "I'm putting the salt and pepper in here." No, but it's it's all in one box. Once it's all in one box. That's the chiddush of the Mishnah. It doesn't matter. You just then it's only one korban. The the only situation the, the situation where it makes a difference is where he where he didn't have the box. Let's say if he didn't have the box and he and he had in one pocket he had the salt and one pocket he had the pepper. I thought if he had the kavana of I'm putting salt and pepper in here and now I've got the box I'm going out, you know that that would be different. Yeah, so so the box joins them into one item. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Um... <sighs> Um, there's another tier uh, which is, um, is which is a lot uh, a lot more um, a lot more intricate in, inside there. I'm not going to take you through it. I'll, I'll leave it as the remaining time is tiritz over there. All right. Um, now, Perik Yud. Um, if somebody stores uh, if somebody stores something for for seed. Uh, dogma or for a sample of the refua or uh or otzia be shabbos and he took it out on shabbos then he's high in any amount and normally let's say you have something that's for food and you need to have a kugageris but if he but if he's keeping the seeds so that he can plant them then that's uh, then any amount of it is is high okay but adam ain chayv alav ela kashiro but anyone else who happens to take it out uh, is only chayv for its shear so I think the guy who's got the kavana to store it uh, for for a sample for for whatever. It's only only he has got that din of the of the chatas. Um, Eliezer, have you have you got your camera or Eliezer? Oh, okay. Um, Riley, you still there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Just checking that that's not a sound issue with me. No, because I can still see you. Um, okay, so uh, so only only he is um, only he is high for these things. Now, if if he changed his mind about uh, about the seed and uh, and brought it back in, right? Then Then he himself also um, is only high if he does it uh, in the right shear. Mm -hmm. So he originally thought that he was going to use it for refuah, and then uh, he decided, eh. I don't think it'll work anyway. Let me just put it. Uh, in, let me just bring, toss it or whatever. And then, 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 as soon, then he immediately reverts to the standard person, and he's no longer hired, uh, hired for for carrying it in a small amount. Hey, Elias, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, good. I can't tell you. Camera's it's, off. What's missing? My, ca oh. my camera. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. That's better. Thank you. Now I can see that your that your kippah has got a curl. I saw what? I'm sorry. Kippah has a curl. <laughs> there it is. I wish my hair had a curl. <laughs> okay. Hamotzi ochrin on the salon ala iskupa. If somebody now this this Mishnah can be a little confusing. You've got to have a little preface over here that in the first part of the Mishnah the iskupa is a different status to the uh, to the second part. Right in the first part, um, is that the 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 doorstep is actually um, uh, is a caramelis, okay, which means it's it's a large it's a large area that's more than four by four, 
and it's uh, and it's it's more than uh, and it's between three and nine tefachim high. So it's not a separate rishus, uh, it, but it is separated from the rishus arabim, and it's not and it's it's only rishus arabim derabanan. So now, a, a person takes food and, and places it on the step, which is a which is a rishus arabim. If it doesn't matter whether he came and took them out into the Rishos of Arabim afterwards, or somebody else came and took them out from the Rishos of Arabim, it's pater, because to be chayv, you have to take from Rishos of Yachit to Rishos of Arabim in one movement. If he puts it on a karmalis in between, and then comes and completes the action later, that's not, that's not a chiv dar isa. Okay? So, that, so the first part of the Mishnah teaches us that the, that the malacha has to be done in one movement. Now, Kupa shehi malaya peros. Once again, here's our box full of fruit. Unasana al ha'is kupa chitzana, and he places it on the on the step. Now this step over here is uh, is a new step. It's a new it's a new case, and the, and this one over here is in the rishus rabin. So it is actually directly he's actually directly putting this box of fruit into the uh, onto his doorstep, but it's 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 partially through his doorway. It's not completely true. So, so his doorway is the boundary between his between his Rishos Yachid and the Rishos Arabim. Afalpisha Rova Paris never puts. So even though most of the most of the Paris are already outside, but they're still in a box. But but the box is still partially inside his doorway. Okay. Yeah. So from this, he is Pater Adche Yotzi is Kola Kupa. It has to be the, the whole Kupa outside. Because again, the box binds everything into one item. Remember, we saw this, you know, just been discussing this, that the box binds everything into one item. And until the box in its entirety is outside, it's not called a hot sah. Okay, are we clear on that? Good. Okay. Then we can do Mishnah Gimel. Hamotzi ben bi mino ben bi smolo. It doesn't matter whether you take stuff out in your right hand or your left hand. Because people do, even right-handed people carry things in their left hand, so there's nothing unnatural about a right-handed carrying stuff in his left hand. But so cheiko, or he's carrying it in his, um, he's carrying it like against his chest, um, or uh, or al kasefo, or he's carrying it on his shoulder. Chayav shekein masa because this is uh, this is, this is the way that the uh, that the bnei has carried the. And all the all the krashim and all the other components of the Mishkan uh, during the time of the Mishkan. I, okay, so he's doing the malacha exactly the way it was intended to to be done, so that uh, that you can be fine for. However, if he does a if he does a shinoi, and the and the different forms of shinoi that we have are he carries it on the back of his hand, or beraglo, if he's carrying something on his foot. Um, or if he carries it out in his mouth, other than the things that, that you know normally get carried out in a person's mouth. Actually, we said the pill pill is normally stays in there, so it's um, so even that is, is not really considered a masoi. Um, but he carries something out in his mouth, or he carries it out on his elbow, but Osna or Basara, or he or he tucks it into his ear, or he, or he threads it into his hair, or he carries it. In his wallet, and he's holding his wallet upside down. Okay, so if we wanted to think about a, a, a drawstring pouch. So he's got his, his pouch, and he and and, and, it's, and it's upside down. Ben kunda so the chaluko, if he puts it between his uh, between his wallet and his and his clothes, so he's kind of just wedging it in there. In, in, okay, or if he, or in the hem of his of his cloak. But minalo, he stuck it in his shoe. Minalo, the sandalo, two different types of, of foot gear. Patur shelohet ikeder chamatzian. All these cases are considered a shinoi, and this is actually the first time I think in the Masechta that we've come across the concept of a shinoi, where if you do a malacha in an in an unnatural way, uh, then the, this is not considered a malacha doraisa. So that's why we often have all of these uh, different things where if you need to do something, do it with a shinoi. Okay. Um, Shabbos Yivav Hey. Okay. A woman may go out with hair, bands of hair, whether of her own hair or of her companion's hair. 
or of an animal's hair, or with a frontlet or with a head bangle, and while they are sewn, or with a forehead pad, or with a wig into a courtyard, with wadding, I'm sorry, with wadding in her ear, uh, or with wadding in her sandal, or with wadding she prepared for a menses with a pepper, or with a goblet of salt, or with anything that she will put into her mouth, provided that she does not put it in initially on Shabbos. And if it fell out, she may not pay the back. A false tooth or a tooth with a gold crown, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi permits them, but the sages permit, uh, prohibit them. A woman may go out with a sella coin that she, can, she ties to a wound on her foot. The young girls may go out with strings, even and even with um, wood chips that are in the holes of their ears. Um, my note says, so that the holes will not seal. Um, the note says young girls would have their ears pierced, but earrings would not be placed in the ears until they were older. So they put little pieces of wood just to keep the holes open. Um, Jewish women in Arab countries could go out veiled and Jewish women in uh, Medea, which is modern day Iraq or Iran, sorry, may go out with cloaks fastened with stones. Any person in any place is permitted to go out on Shabbat clothed in that way. However, the sages spoke in the present addressing the prevalent situations. I don't know, really know what that last note is going to tell saying, us. It's saying that, that even though the, the Mishnah spe, spe, uh, specifies which type of women can go out wearing this, it doesn't matter that it, it, it can be, women, it, the question was asked by women in Arab countries because that was the prevalent dress. But if a woman in any other country wants to wear that, then that's also okay. Did you say, did you say, Riley, did you say stones? Stones. Oh, stones, because I don't even have that here. Maybe what did you say, st say, what are stones? A cloak fastened. Yeah. And then my commentary says, with stones. I don't know. All right. Uh, I guess that would be the issue. Like, so what if your cloak's fastened? Like the, like the stone would be carrying. Yeah, because the because there's a chashash that the, the, the stone would be considered carrying. But it's uh, but uh, that's that's legit. That's just a part, it's just a cloak fastener. Once it's in the once it's in the cloak, but of course it has to be designated for for cloak fastening before Shabbos comes in. Otherwise, it's just um, a stone and it's mukta. So what this is saying is that say you lived in somewhere else where they didn't typically fasten their cloaks with stones yes. and yet you did that's that thing. would be okay yes or zion she may fashion fasten her cloak with a stone or with a nut or with a coin provided she does not fasten it initially on shabbos okay so that's actually the last comment that i made about it is that it, uh, um, it's, it's totally okay to use these things that are normally muktza. um for, for passing the stone as long as uh, as long as they're designated before Shabbos. Right, Orla, um, base yard. It's not in the case over there, but maybe you could put your phone on. Maybe if it's not on mute or something, maybe you'll be able to hear it. Somewhere. Orla, uh, sorry, what? Which which Mishnah? Orla. Orla base yard. Base yod. Okay, seasonings consisting of two or three categories of one spice or consisting of three spices of one category are forbidden and combined. Rabbi Shimon says two or three categories of one spice or two spices of one category do not combine. <coughs> Excuse me. If leaven of coolant and of chuma fell into dough and neither this suffice to leaven or that suffice to leaven, but together they leaven, Rabbi Eliezer says, I go after the last. But come and say, whether the forbidden fell in first or last, it never renders forbidden unless it suffices to leaven. Okay. Yuezer, master of the temple, Ishabria, was one of the disciples of Beis Shammai. And he said, I asked Rabbi Gamliel, the elder, as he was standing on the eastern gate of the temple. And he said, it never causes the dough to become prohibited unless there is enough to cause fermentation. That's, it seems like even even the Shalinics are uh, are on board with this one. Okay. Um, Shvius, Tes Gimel. And why did they? And why did they say two countries so that they may eat in each one until the last and it is gone? Reb Shimon says they spoke of three countries only concerning Judea, but the other countries are like the King's Mountain, and all the countries are as one in regard to olives and dates. 
Dalid. Come on. Uh, one may eat by virtue of similar produce regarded as ownerless, still found in the fields, but not when it was stored and declared own ownerless. Um, okay. Rabbi Yossi permits even when it was stored and then declared owner ownerless. One may continue to eat by virtue of the poor grains that grow between the grass or by virtue of the trees that yield biannually, but one must not eat by virtue of wine grapes. Rabbi Yehuda permits, provided they begin to ripen before the summer of the seventh year has ended. I'm not sure what my translation means by, ver by virtue of. Um, like because of? Yes, because of. They're, they're, because they are still in the field. Uh, and that's the, remember with, with Shvi's produce, um, it's, uh, the Shvi's produce has a, has a din of beer. Um, the, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're allowed to have Shmita produce in your home as long as the produce is still available in the field. Once the produce is no longer available in the field, then you have to do beer. You have to get rid of it, which mean, basically means taking it out and making it half beer. Mm -hmm. You can immediately take possession of it again. Um, but uh, but so we have all these lands which which basically are, are used for judging whether the produce in those lands is uh, is uh, is permitted, and um, and we say by virtue of so so which you know, sort of cross species which uh, you know something of a similar species does that work to permit you to keep the the other stuff that's in your house? Okay. Cool. All right, hey. If one preserves three vegetables in one jar, if Eliezer says one may eat on account of the first, Rabbi Hua says also on account of the last. Ram Glamil says if a species is ended in the field, that species must be eliminated from the jar, and the halakha follows him. Reb Shimon says all vegetables are as one in regard to beer, and one may not uh, eat uh, portzalak until vegetables have ended in the valley of Beit Netofa. This is, this is an amazing mission, actually. Because if you look at Rabbi Yeshua's opinion, Rabbi Yeshua's opinion is amazing. Um, he's saying that that you're allowed to keep eating them even um, even for if the last one is still left in the field. So you've got three different species in the in, in one jar. Okay. And the other two species have finished in the field. And we've got, and just because there's a, a, a tam heter, there's, there's one one piece that's the one fruit that still is available in the field. The other two are, are still permitted. And that, that's like a, a great little lumdisha riddle. It's like, where do you have a case of something that would otherwise be asr were it not for the taste of heter in it? Right. Is it like, it's usually the other way around. Say, no, 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 <laughs> dude, that, that doesn't exist. <laughs> here it is. This mission over here, Rabbi Yeshua has his whole, has, according to the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua, um, in terms of beer, uh, because he's, he's, there's, there's a chiddush by particularly by beer of, of Shmita produce, that um, that the tam heter of something of something can uh, can change the uh, can change the nature of the uh, of the object, so that's not considered as if uh, as if it's um, as if it's uh, it's the species is finished in the field and therefore has to do beer on it. So that's a that's a that's a nice little lumdisha riddle that you can that you can share with your friends and impress them. <laughs> okay, um, we're in Taros Gimel Vav. Okay, a wall that consists of tens. Wait, I'm no, in Shavia no, still. <laughs> I meant Shavius. Uh, if you have it, Eliezer, go ahead. Um, I'm getting there. It's uh, which one again? Sorry. Gimel Vav. Gimel Vav. Gimel Vav. Hey, Vav. If a deaf mute... Uh, a person not of sound senses or a minor, so Cheres Shotevikata, was found in an alleyway that contained something that was unclean. He is presumed to be clean, but any of sound sense is presumed to be unclean. 
that's interesting. And anyone or anything that lacks understanding to be inquired of is in a case of doubt and presumed to be clean. Right. So this is uh, so this is so yeah. We this is a, a great fundamental principle that we have um, is that when you have a suffix tumor, if it's if a suffix tumor arises in a rishus harabim, we say tahor. In all cases, if it's a suffix, if it's a suffix in the rishus harabim, tahor. This mm -hmm. is now talking about a suffix in rishus yachid, which in general we say is tame. Um, but but that's only tame if the subject of the tumor is a person who can be asked. Okay, but so if, if he says, uh, uh, just an ordinary Joe, yeah, an ordinary uh, says Joe, he's found in an alleyway with a something tumor, and you had said, did you did, touch did, that you thing? Know, you, know, you know that you walked, uh, that you walked just like uh, right past that chariot over there barefoot, did you, did you touch it? And he says, I don't know. Then he's Tame. Because that's a suffix tumor in the Rishasa, in the Rishasa Yachid. However, if it was uh, if it if it was uh, something that that doesn't uh, something so as a kid, and you say, "Hey, did you touch that shirt?" And the kid goes, "I like sprinkles." Uh, yes. All right. Thanks. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then, then I would think Kalvachomer if that kid would be Tame. Like, if I would expect anybody to go touch a dead shirt, it would be a little boy. Like, <laughs> but he didn't so, know if he, if he if he did touch it. If he, you know, then he would be, then he would be tame. But, uh, but, you know, if he, if he told us that, that he touched it, then he, yeah, he'd be tame, but he said, I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, any cotton. Uh, by the way, is that a cotton? I wonder how, how young this cotton has to be because uh, I am Darcy Shail. So it, it sounds to me like it's like a really young cotton who you, put, you couldn't ask the question to. Anyway, let's move on. Zion. By the way, Raleigh, as a lawyer, you know that was a um, sexist remark. What? No, you said so probably only a boy would, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I, sorry if I triggered anybody listening to the recording. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zion. Um, regarding a child who was found by the side of a cemetery and roses are in his hand, and there are no roses except at the site of the tumor, he is deemed Tahor, for I say that another person picked them up and gave them to him. And similarly, if a donkey is found between the graves, uh, graves, his harness is Tahor. There you go. So that's a, a practical application because the animal can't become Tame. A live animal never becomes Tame. Um, but, uh, but if it's, but it's, but it's uh, saddle could have become Tame. And we say, no, it's, it's called Tahor. Okay, move on to Ches. Yes. A child was found next to dough with a piece of dough in his hand. Rabbi Meir says the dough is clean, but the sages say that it is unclean since it's the nature of a child to slap dough. See, there you go. Dough that bears traces of hen's peckings and there is unclean lo liquid in the same house. If there was distance enough between the liquid and the loaves for the hens to dry their mouths on the ground, the dough is clean. And in the case of a cow or a dog, if there was distance enough for it to lick its tongue, and in the case of all other beasts, if there was distance enough for their tongues to dry. Rabbi Eliezer Ben Yaakov holds that the dough for the dough holds the dough to be clean in the case of a dog who is smart, for it is not its habit to leave food and go after the water. The concern is that the if the water the water is tame, it'll be matame the it'll be matame the food. The dog is the dog is smart enough to know what, what resources are scarce. So you'll go straight for the food and then and the water afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, Menachos. General Zion. Okay. Uh, the seven branches of Enora are essentially uh, are essential to the validity of one another. Its seven lamps are essential to the validity of one another, and the two scriptural passages which are in the uh, mezuzah are essential to the validity of each other, and even the writing of one letter is essential to them. The four passages which are in tefillin <clears throat> are essential to the validity of one another, and even the writing of one letter is essential to them. The four fringes of the sitters are essential to the validity of one another, and as 
as they are all for one mitzvah. Where the Mishnah El says the four of them are for mitzvahs. Yeah, we kind of uh, digressed into this because uh, in the previous Mishnah we were talking about uh, about what on the Mizbeach is my cave So the so Mishnah Zion tells us about other mitzvahs that are uh, that that are my cave each other, and uh, and we carry on with, um, and we carry on with with other things like that in Perik Dalad. Perik Dalad, Dalad Alaf. The absence of tehillit strings does not prevent fulfillment of the mitzvah of ritual fringes with the white strings, and the absence of white strings does not prevent prevent fulfillment of the mitzvah with tehillis. Right. So, in other words, even though even though you might not have tehillis in your tzitzis, it's fine because it's, 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 it's an additional mitzvah to have to have the tehillis in your in your tzitzis. And similarly, if you didn't have white and you had and all you had were tehillis strings, you could you could make your tzitzis entirely out of tehillis strings. If one had only one, he wears it without the other. Absence of the the arm tefillin does not prevent fulfillment of the mitzvah of the tefillin of the head. And absence of the head does not pre prevent fulfillment of the mitzvah of the tefillin of the, of the arm. If one had, my note says, if he has only one, he dons it without the other. The mission, okay, uh, good, good. The absence of fine flour and the oil for the meal offering accompanying burnt offerings and peace offerings does not prevent libation of the wine. And the absence of the wine does not prevent the sacrifice of the flour and the oil. Failure to perform some of the placements of blood on the external altar does not prevent fulfillment of the mitzvah with the other placements. Even if the priest performed only one placement of blood, the offering affects atonement after the fact. Mm -hmm. So things that are not ma'akev one another. Right. The bulls, the rams, and the lambs are not essential to one another's validity. Rav says, if they, if they had many bulls but no libations, they should bring one bull with its libations, rather than offering all of them without libations. Mm. Okay. The Dharam Zion Base. Zion Base. For one who vows that grain, Dagan, is forbidden to him, it's prohibited to eat the dry cow pea because, like grain, its final stage of production involves being placed in a pile. This is the statement of Rabbi Meir. The Chamim say it's prohibited for him to partake of only the five species of grain, wheat, barley, oats, spelt, and rye, as that's what the term dagan means in the Torah. Rabbi Meir says, for one who vows that grain is forbidden to him and therefore he will refrain from eating the grain, and grain here is tevua, it's prohibited for him to eat only from the five species of grain. However, for one who vows that grain is forbidden him, and therefore he will refrain from eating grain, using the word dagan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm looking yeah, at my English. Is right, yes. Yeah, dagan. Um, is prohibited to eat all produce whose final stage of production involves being placed in a pile, for example, dry cowpea. And it is permitted for him to eat fruits of the tree and vegetables. Right. Okay. okay. One who makes a nether prohibiting clothing is permitted sackcloth, sheets, sheets of cloth, and heavy fabric. If he said, Konam, wool from coming upon me, he is permitted to clothe himself with wool shearings, shearings. Flax from coming upon me, he is permitted to clothe himself with stalks of flax. If Yehudi says, all depends on the person making the nether. If he was uh, carrying a load and he destroyed it and smelled badly, and he said, Konam, wool of flax coming upon me, he is permitted to clothe himself with these but it is forbidden to carry bundles of these on his back. Okay. Uh, for one who vows that a house is forbidden to him, entry is permitted for him in the upper story of the house. This is Rabbi Meir. This is a statement of Rabbi Meir. And the rabbis say its upper story is included in the house and therefore entry is prohibited there as well. However, for one who vows that an upper story is forbidden to him, entry is permitted in the house as the ground floor is not included in the upper story. Okay, and that's us for today. Um, Shaw, tomorrow, um, I don't know, we don't know if you're going to be post or free or whatever, so I will try to get uh, I can, so. Yeah, can you keep an eye, because uh, I might want to start early so that I can get to uh, a later minion. All right, I will, um, you, you want to start earlier? Um, 
it's a good chance that that's where I'll be. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll send a message in the morning. Okay. All right. And I'll try to do what I can. Okay. Um, Riley, are you going to KSY in the mornings? Um, sometimes. So just keep <laughs> me posted. <laughs> okay. I have, I, I've been leaving early like no one else leaves early. So I have now people opening the door for me. When I get up to move, they open the door so I can get out. <laughs> it's very funny. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy. Have a good day.